Hi everyone, I wanted to talk about a new Joan Jett album, and when I say new, let's figure a year old. It's this one called Unvarnished. This is an album that Joan Jett and the Blackhearts released, um, it's about a year ago now, so this is a year old, and if you wonder why as a Joan Jett fan it's taken me so long to get around to doing a proper review of this album, well, I did do a review of the CD, I didn't have the vinyl yet, back when it first came out, but... I deleted the video pretty quickly because I thought I didn't really give this album enough of a chance, you know? I was kind of lukewarm on it and uh, wanted to play it some more and give it more of a, a fair chance. And uh, I gotta say, <laughs> now I've played it at least a half a dozen times all the way through and gotten pretty familiarized with the songs on here. And I gotta say, I'm still the same on it. I'm kind of lukewarm on it. And that doesn't mean it's a bad album. It's not bad. But it's not among my favorites. Um, just a little background. The last album that I really remember really liking by Joan was uh, probably 1994's Pure and Simple, which is now 20 years old. And after that, uh, she kind of like, uh, I guess, gave into her her real self and what she really wanted to do. And that was great. You have to be true to yourself, right? She put this out in 1999, uh, CD, called Fetish which was mostly sexual songs and pretty weird. I mean, we went through a period where she starred on, on, uh, in New York doing, uh, Rocky Horror, the Rocky Horror Picture Show, and she shaved her head for that, and she went around with a shaved head for a while. She went around with, uh, short blonde hair for a while, and, uh, got into this real, like, S&M kind of stuff, which is like, uh, it was an interesting departure, I'll say that, but it just didn't seem like the Joan Jett that I knew, you know, kind of. It was odd. Now, the thing that really about this particular album that had come out that I really wasn't crazy about was the fact that most of the songs on here were old songs just repeated. They just, I don't mean new recordings of the old songs, I mean just the old songs put on here and trying to make an album out of it. There's like about, I haven't counted them yet, maybe three or four new songs on here that are pretty good. But most of this was just a rehash of old songs repeated. So I really wasn't thrilled with this. And then, uh, that was 1999. We had to wait all the way to 2006. You know, it's like seven years between albums till we got to this one, which was an, uh, an album on CD also called Sinner. By this time, Joan was kind of looking a lot like the Joan that we'd known for a long time, you know. Um, and, uh... I was also lukewarm on this album. This is not among my favorites. There's some really good tracks on here. I mean, uh, songs like uh, Riddles, ACDC, uh, I like Androgynous. Some of these are covers, you know, Androgynous, uh, Change the World. There's some good stuff on here. And Baby Blue again. This also repeated like a few songs, you know, from other albums. I mean, Baby Blue, uh, I think, had also been on the Fetish album. I mean, eh, there wasn't any real album of all new material to another seven years. So you had seven year gap and another seven year gap to get unvarnished. And before I go into the details of the songs and things, just want to say I just was watching, uh, you know, some online interview with Joan about why did it take her so long to put this album out, and uh, she said, uh, well, you know, I we were touring to support the Sinner album before this, and that took a year or so, and then I had to make a movie, uh, you know, when I was on the set every day, the Runaways film that came out, the documentary of uh, whatever you pseudo documentary about the Runaways, and uh, so she says she's very busy, you know. And uh, she didn't have time to make a record. Music wasn't even in her mind. Well, uh, look, in the old days, again, need I bring it up? The Beatles, had their entire recording career was pretty much seven years. And in, the, in this, the amount of time that Joan took off from this, they managed to do concerts everywhere, uh, two movies, a cartoon, uh, you know, you get the picture. So, I mean... No excuses, no excuses, but uh, I'm glad to just have another Joan Jett album. Now, the cover of this album, what's she supposed to be, an airplane, airplane uh, pilot or something here with those big glasses? It's not a bad cover. This is a back cover. Uh, the feeling, here's the, the album I have. By the way, this album, I don't know, is warped. I don't know if it shows on there, but it's a warped album, you know. It goes up a little bit. It doesn't affect the, the the music. The songs play fine, but when you listen to it, it's like a surfboard riding the waves, watching the tone arm go up and down. So, anyway, I'm also 
kind of lukewarm on this album still. Um, it starts out with a great song. I think it's the best on the album called Any Weather. Any Weather is a real strong rocker. And it was also written partly not just by Joan Jett, but by uh, David Grohl also. So uh, it got a lot of energy and it's real vintage Joan. I love the sound of it. Uh, second track on here is really catchy. It's kind of plain and simple, uh, but it, it's catchy. It's called TMI, as in too much information or people say TMI. You know, uh, it sticks in my head right now. The chorus is really pr pretty good. Uh, then you get a, a song called Soulmates to Strangers, which is nice, you know, saying how we, we started out as really being, you know, in love and together. And then as time went on, we became strangers. It's a nice song. Um, what I find about this album is that this is Joan trying to talk about more mature themes, I think, you know, and really like discovering herself and things that she feels, such as in the fourth song on here, which is a song called Make It Back. And uh, Make It Back is about Hurricane Sandy and how she felt. She lived in Long Beach, New York, and she was, I, I don't know if she was on a train or something on the way, and, you know, this heavens were opening up and the lightning and everything. Now, the only reason I know that this song, Make It Back, is about Hurricane Sandy is because I've heard her say that in interviews. I wouldn't have known, just by listening to the song, you'd have no clue that it was about that. And I find that as I'm listening to the album, it starts to kind of go down a little bit this is this is a classic case of an album i swear that it the best song is the first song second best song is second third best fourth best, and it literally goes down all the way to the end of the album for me i'm only speaking for me uh you know so make it back the thing that's annoying about it is what i can't stand when you listen to songs and they seem to, to run out of, of lyrics and ideas. So after a while, you know, there's a line in here where she says, you know, I hope this train won't fall off the track because I've got to make it back. And she says that over and over again. I hope this train won't fall off the track because i got to make it back. I hope that, you know, when you start doing that and you just keep like repeating things, I think it gets a little desperate, you know. Then we go to a song number five called Hard to Grow Up. Now, Joan Jett's birthday is actually September 22nd. She's going to be uh, 56, I think. Uh, you know, it's hard to tell because I've seen different dates given as, by Joan as her birthday, but I think she's going to be 56. By the way, I should mention, when she recorded this album, she was probably 55-ish or something like that. She still sounds great. She sounds great on this record. She sounds really powerful and in great voice. Real rockin' Joan. Um, but hard to grow up by the age of 56, you know, you got to grow up a little bit. Yeah. It's, and they say that she's singing about more adult themes about how she lost her, her parents and she's experiencing deaths and things like that. But yet the funny thing is, I find that when I listen to some of this music, it's very, very juvenile. You know, I've been a fan of Joan Jett since I've been 19 years old and I'm in my fifties now. And I find that her earlier stuff is the best the 80s, stuff in the 80s and some of the early 90s. But I just get the feeling a lot when I'm listening to Joan that maybe it's the same thing that a lot of KISS fans experience, you know? Those people out there who like KISS, a lot of them say they got into KISS when they were like 14, 15 years old, and now they're in their 50s and they're kind of like big kids. I kind of feel like that listening to this album. I really do. I kind of feel like it's... The, the subjects on the record aren't necessarily for kids, they're grown-up subjects about, you know, the hurricane and being hard to grow up and having romances that start out as soulmates and go down as strangers. But the, the approach and the sound of Joan's style is what sounds kind of like, you know, 14 years old. And I, and I liked that a lot when I was 19 and in my 20s. But I just find that at, in my 50s, although some of these songs are good, it just seems like uh, kind of like you, you're almost too old for them. And uh, that's how I kind of feel about the, the, the feeling of it. Uh, that's the first five songs. I think the first five songs are the best. And I guess that would be, on, as far as the vinyl is concerned, side one. Side one is the best. I got no problems really with too much of any of the songs on side one. I think uh, Any Weather is the best. TMI is fantastic. Second great song. Uh, Soulmates to Strangers is good. Then Make It Back is getting starting to lose its vision. I don't think it really comes across what she's trying to say, uh, other than reading about it in interviews and knowing what she's getting at. 
and then hard to grow up a little down a little more but still all right side two i really don't like anything on side two i'll be honest with you sorry joan uh fragile uh, written by joan herself some of these are written by joan herself some of them written by uh, you know with other people uh, when you start getting to the point where you have to just keep saying, I'm fragile, I'm fragile, I'm fragile, F-R-A-G-L-I-L-E, and you have to spell out the word, you know, yeah. Anyway, uh, then we got a song called Reality Mentality, which I guess is supposed to like, yo, reality mentality, reality mentality, it's supposed to stick in your head. Don't care for it. Bad as we can be, don't care for it. Another song called Different, you know, about people that are, you know, uh, ostracized, I suppose, because of being different than other people. I can appreciate the sentiment in that song. Don't really care for the song much. The last song is not bad. Everybody Needs a Hero. Everybody Needs a Hero is all right. Uh, written by Kenny Laguna, uh, manager with Peter Anders. Um, I, I would say, so again, you're talking about there's 10 songs on this album. Uh, I think two are excellent. I think... Three are okay, or maybe four are okay, and the rest, you know, I could do without. So anyway, this is a mid-range album for Joan Jett for me, um, not amongst my favorites of hers. I still go for the bad reputation. I love rock and roll days, uh, first bunch of albums, and uh, it's still good to have her back. Uh, not that she ever went anywhere. She's always been touring, always been making concert appearances. I haven't seen her. I used to see her live many, many times in the 80s, 1980s. I saw her a lot. I don't think I've seen her live since 19, I think 89 might have been the last time. When she was. She did a stint on Broadway, five shows. I think I went to two or three of them. I don't remember, maybe more. But uh, I'm glad Joan's here doing what she does. Joan, don't make it seven years before the next album. Anyway, hope you make it back. Oh, one last thing. Why isn't this woman in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? I mean, come on. She opened doors for so many other other women in, in rock and roll. And uh, the one reason, if no other reason, why Joan belongs in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is because she really breathes and lives and has the soul of rock and roll. And uh, that's what it's about, right? You know, she's not just somebody going through the motions to get a paycheck. So this woman is rock and roll. Put her in the Hall of Fame.